intra-articular type C fracture of the distal humerus. The type C fracture as it may present itself on the initial X-ray. By gentle traction on the flexed forearm, the fragments reduce themselves by ligamentotaxis. It may be advisable to take new X-rays under traction. This facilitates pre-operative planning, which should always be done in such a complex fracture situation. For the final fixation, the plates should be placed at right angles to each other. The reconstruction plate lies on the dorsoradial side of the humerus. The one-third tubular plate acts as a buttress on the ulnar crest of the bone. For surgery, the patient is placed in a lateral or prone position. The humerus abducted at a right angle on a radiolucent support. The entire arm is draped and freely movable. The fracture is exposed through a straight incision from the ulnar crest to the middle of the humerus, curving slightly around the olecranon on the radial side. The ulnar nerve must be identified, and it may be advisable to place an elastic sling around the gently mobilized nerve. To get good exposure of the articular fragments and to judge their accurate reduction, it is essential to perform an osteotomy of the olecranon during the whole triceps muscle attachment proximally. A chevron osteotomy is preferred to a transverse cut, facilitating reconstruction by tension band wiring. Using the oscillating saw, only four-fifths of the bone are cut. The final bit is broken off with a chisel, and the olecranon is reflected proximally. With the fracture situation assessed and the bone surfaces cleared of hematoma, the reconstruction may start. In case of an intermediate fragment between the capitellum and trochlea, it is advisable to first drill a K-wire into the radial fragment by means of the inside-out technique. Therefore, the blunt end of the wire is sharpened by an oblique cut. A special 1.25 millimeter wire with threaded tip is selected because a cannulated 3.5 millimeter cancellous screw is to be used. The fracture is now anatomically reduced and held in place by a pointed reduction forceps with care being taken not to damage the ulnar nerve. The threaded K-wire, which can also serve as a reduction aid, is now drilled in the reverse direction, outside in, all across the three articular fragments. The correct reduction of the fragments, especially their rotation against each other, must be checked because at this point, it can still be corrected. The length of the cannulated 3.5 millimeter cancellous screw is measured with the special measurement device, taking into account the short bit which was cut off. The hole for the screw is prepared with the cannulated drill bit. The special drill sleeve with stop may be adjusted in order not to penetrate too far across, which may lead to loss of the reduction or the K-wire being pulled out. The cannulated tap is used only to give the screw a good start in hard, cancellous bone. Insertion of the 3.5 millimeter cancellous screw. Tightening the screw induces interfragmentary compression, securing the articular fragments to make them one block. Clamps and K wire are removed. This block is now reduced to the shaft of the humerus. K wires and or pointed reduction clamps may be used to hold this second step.
The template of a six- or seven-hole reconstruction plate is placed on the dorsoradial aspect of the bone. As the articular surface does not extend far posteriorly, the plate may be contoured and bent accordingly with the special pliers. Much care has to be taken for accurate contouring. The first 2.5 millimeter hole is drilled in the capitellum. The length of the hole is measured with the depth gauge. After tapping, the screw is inserted. The second screw is placed in an eccentric position in the humerus shaft fragment. We now move to the ulnar side of the humerus where a slightly pre-bent one-third tubular plate is placed on the crest of the bone so that its screws will lie in the frontal plane. The first screw crossing the fracture line must be introduced as a lag screw. The near cortex is therefore overdrilled with the 3.5 millimeter drill bit. Measuring the length. Tapping. and screw insertion. In case of a six-hole plate and good bone quality, as in our model, the addition of only two more screws at either end will suffice. The screws are tightened. Back on the radial side, we complete the fixation by adding a few more cortex screws, their number again depending on how well their purchase is in the bone. At this point, an intraoperative x-ray is advisable to make sure there are no surprises. Finally, the olecranon is reduced and held in place by a pointed reduction clamp. First, a transverse 2 millimeter hole is drilled into the ulna, 2 centimeters distal to the osteotomy. A 1 millimeter wire loop is mounted. Two 1.6 longitudinal K wires are placed parallel to each other through the olecranon into the ulna. The figure of eight wire loop is fastened in slight extension of the elbow and tightened. The K wires are cut and bent. Now the K-wires are completely sunk into the olecranon. The final aspect of our open reduction and internal fixation of a type C fracture. With good reduction and good fixation, this arm may be moved immediately. A splint will not be necessary.
The other possibility is shown here using two twists in order to fasten the cerclage wire in a symmetrical fashion.